Kristen Magana. And I'm Eric Roby. <laughs> Welcome to an extra spooky edition of Week in Review. We've got zombies, vampires, pumpkins, and whodunits, as long as we also have a few ghost stories. Are you ready for that? Yes, we've got witches uh -huh. like Kristen Magana. You are the one dressed as a witch. <laughs> I'm Kristen Magana. <laughs> Didn't you hear my high pitched voice when uh, I interviewed you? Yeah, I don't have a high pitched voice. Okay, fine, devil. Whatever. Suit if you're yourself. looking to get scared this week with all kinds of haunts, we've got all the info you need to know from all of the creepy corners of the county. We're going to start off with a mystery. Our community spotlight correspondent, Vipulin, has disappeared, folks. That's right. She told us she was going to take care of a zoning inspection in South County and hasn't been seen or heard from since. This is not good. Not good at all. Vipulin is, uh, Vipulin can't drive too well at night, so we got to get her before. <laughs> Don't be me. I like V. We retraced her footsteps and found this tape lying along a road with signs of a struggle. Let's see what was captured on the tape. It's B, and I'm down here in South County again this week, and I thought our viewers might like to go with me when I look at a property. You know, I get a lot of complaints being in the uh, County Executive's Office of Community and Constituent Services about abandoned houses, junk and debris, a variety of things. And I got a call about this place, um, all kinds of violations, I think. So I thought it might be interesting for our viewers to come with me and see what I find and how we handle it. So I got Mike here with me, our cameraman, and we're just going to kind of take a wide shot. This house, you can see, looks really um, abandoned and in bad shape. I don't know if anybody's here. The property here has got litter all over it. Oh my God, there's some barrels here. Uh, that doesn't look very good. That could be, uh, God knows what that could be. Paint, boat paint, diesel fuel, who knows. Uh, the house looks like uh, nobody's been here for a while, but a lot of graffiti, so it might be a hangout. Oh yeah, it looks like antifreeze. This is a pretty big property, actually, and um, oh, there's more barrels back here, Mike. Can you get all of those? It looks like somebody's uh, storing stuff here, and it's so close to the bay. This could be um, a real problem. Maryland Department of the Environment will probably get involved with this, and we'll get DNR out here. I keep hearing music. Where is that music coming from? Do you hear that, Mike? Mm -hmm. That isn't what I think it is. It is! Somebody's playing banjo music. They're trying to scare us. Well, let's go back and check out the house. Lots of uh, invasive species, poison ivy everywhere. Yeah, I think our um, tall grass people are going to have to come out here. County foresters are going to have to come out here. I think I'm going to have to call um, Joni Coleman Casey at Code Enforcement and see about all this junk and debris. And let's see if the house is open for casual entry. Oh my gosh, it's open. That's going to be a Bill Bryant call. Casual entry. <gasps> oh, hello. Uh, Mike, you stick with me here. Hi, I'm B. Poulin with the uh, County Executive's Community Services Office. Is it okay if I come in and take a look? We've had a lot of complaints about this place. Um, Neighbors are a little upset about the, all the debris out here and uh, the barrels. And um, it's kind of an interesting house. Do you mind if I come in and take a look? Okay, follow you. 
Uh, Mike, I hope we're doing the right thing here. Oh, where'd you go? Holy smokes, what in the world happened in here? You guys, uh, do you live here? You do? Very, very nice interior decorating. Um, do you live here full time or are you just like a summer resident? Summer resident? Full time. Oh, okay. And what is all this? Um, is this your, uh, you're storing stuff here? Oh, okay. So do you just live here? Oh, very nice. Holy smolies. What do we got going on here? Have you got a lot of people living here? Oh, how you know, multiple unrelated, unrelated people? Uh, like roommates? Ah, oh, I see. And this guy, um, what, what are you doing with all that? What is that on your shirt? Okay. Uh, I don't mean any offense here. I'm just uh, checking out some complaints from people in the neighborhood. Really? Yeah, I, I can give you my card. I'm, I'm B. Poolin with the county executive's office. Okay. Well, um, is there anything else you want to show me? Okay. It's all right. Nice, nice to meet you. Oh. Is there any light on in here? Hey, uh, where'd you go? You got any lights on in here? Hey, Mike, you with me? Oh, is this the baby's room? Oh, where's the baby? Oh, the baby died. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry for your loss. Well, um, it's nice that you, you keep a room to, for remembering the baby by. Oh, you have a little electrical problem? A little one. You know, we, we work with BG&E to, to help people with their electricity problems. Maybe you need a little energy assistance. Oh, okay. Hi. How are you doing? Wonderful. Great. Oh, what, uh, you got a little, um, a little bit of everything here. Okay. Oh, my goodness. What's happened in here? Uh, you know, looks like uh, somebody done a little uh, artwork in here. Is this artwork? It's really realistic, fantastic. And, uh, oh my lord, how are you? Oh, are you the, uh, you're, you're cooking up a little meal today? Oh, what do we got here? Oh, no, thank you. No, no, thank you. I, I had lunch and I'm about to, about to lose it. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Um, if I can help you in any way, a uh, health department might want to talk to you about the conditions of this kitchen. Thank you very much. Okay, where are we, where are we going now? Boy, you know, sounds like some big, big, oh. Some, what is that? Uh, I guess we'll just keep, oh, excuse me. Are you all right? Hello, Matt. Okay. You're it? Yeah. Uh, well, um, here's my card. If I can ever be of any help to you, just give me a call. You know, um, Mike, I just, I want to check out that baby again, make sure that baby's okay. Why don't you go on out and I'll be right back. Oh. Mike. Mike. What, Mike, where'd you go? 
You got to come back in here. Oh. Oh, Mike. Oh, that baby tasted so good. And it's so bright out here. Zoning enforcement's going to love this place. You got to come on down. While that's scary stuff, be the Deal 42 Volunteer Fire Department has opened up Morgue Manor to visitors every Halloween for over 20 years. The house benefits the Deal Volunteer Fire Department and Rescue Squad. Morgue Manor is open October 26th to the, to the 28th and November 1st through the 3rd from 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m., weather permitting, of course. Tickets are $13 per person and are non-refundable, even if you never make it past the driveway. Ooh, isn't that scary? <laughs> yeah, wow. I know they have chainsaws. You you went every year since you turned, you went every year it's been open. I, I went to Morgan Manor when I was little, but I haven't when been in a while. When you were two, when it first opened, you were two years old and you mm. went there. No, I didn't. No? But if I had, kids under five are free, Yeah. but it is a little scary and those small children might not be able to handle it too well. Or 30-year-old devils. I'm not... 30 yet. Oh, buy your ticket and park. I am. <laughs> buy your ticket and park at the Deal Fire Hall at 6007 Drum Point and then take the shuttle bus to the house if you dare. For more information, check out www.deal42.com or call 410-867-1350. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Oh, you take my lines. <laughs> well, that's one way to kick off the show. You know, Kristen, one of my favorite things about Halloween what? are the horror movies. Oh, horror, no, scary, no, clowns from outer space. No, what? That's your favorite, isn't it? I don't it? like clowns. But what are your favorite, let's go with just three horror movies. You go ahead, you know, Dave Abrams, <laughs> our wonderful producer who does great things and likes to eat big cheeseburgers, oh recommends God. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Creep Show, and... Ooh, get this one, The Shining. Ugh. That one scares you a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what about you? What, what do you like? Clowns from Outer Space. No, I clowns don't. Clowns in the Closet. No. And, and Clowns, it, Clowns, no, and More Clowns. No, I don't Is like it a clown? Clowns. It's a clown movie. Is it? Yes. Really? Oh, I gosh. Hmm. Get educated. Ah, you're um, right. I don't even know if these count as horror movies, but I'm going to go with The Nightmare Before Christmas. Hocus Pocus. Oh, no. Those are like kids' movies. And I'm going to say Frank and Weenie because I just saw it. Nightmare on Elm Street? It's Could no. you, could you okay, stomach look, Nightmare on Elm Street? This is like the only time I tried watching a horror movie. Here's what happened. Take you back to South River High School. Oh, Boyfriend at the time whoa, convinces whoa. me. What was his name, by the way? Josh. Boyfriend. What was his name? <laughs> Shut no, your mouth. <laughs> You'll never find him. Um, convinces me to watch Halloween. Yeah. Obviously, on Halloween. Yeah. What I screamed so hard the next Monday at school, I had completely red eyes because I broke blood vessels in my eyes. I screamed that hard. Oh Kristen gosh. in scary movies don't Kristen embarrassing well. stories. Wow. Yeah. Very so, nice. What about you? So Josh never talked to you again, huh? <laughs> it's <just your> mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the reason we broke up. Oh, mm. Anyway. Yeah. Ooh, you, now it's scary the love connection. Scary yes. Or maybe Jerry Springer and Dr. Phil all Shut rolled into mouth. one scary with movies. the devil herself. Scary movies. Um, uh, Forrest Gump's kind of scary, that don't you think? That is not a horror movie. Yeah, it's pretty horrible that Jenny dies. I mean, oh, that's horrible. Goodness. I've never seen it. Thanks for never seen it. it. I like I'm just kidding. I like the uh, I like the Freddy Krueger. So I'm a big I'm, I'm like Freddy Krueger. So, so wait, Freddy or Jason? I like Jason. Okay. Jason. Jason, okay. I think would take Fre Alien Freddy. Alien or Predator? Mm, Predator's pretty bad. Guess how many of these movies I've seen before? Zero. None. Zero. Zilch. None. Then not a. Now, of course, a big part of Halloween is decorating your own haunted house. Do you guys do decorations? Our house is not haunted, but we have pumpkins. We have big pumpkins. <laughs> you I live bought, there. We of bought course a it's haunted. 40-pound pumpkin. 40 pounds? 40, well, one's 40. Rachel's is 40. I think Brandon's like 35 pounds. They're huge pumpkins. All right, they do you guys toast the, the seeds pumpkins. when you carve them? Well, you know, we don't do that. Oh, no, we used to do that all the time. Yeah. But um, some people go all out. In fact, last night I saw a huge inflatable black cat in someone's front yard. Meow with purple and orange lights all over the place. Really? It was crazy. I thought they were decorated for Christmas, and then I realized it was Halloween. It's Halloween, but Halloween. Yeah, we are lucky enough to have one of our own to count as that kind of person. The Hagans, Brian and Christine of Gambrels, have really hooked their house up with some decorations that will get the whole neighborhood dancing. Let's take a look at what they've done. Halloween, this is Halloween, this 
dancing nice. Now our own Jody Letty went out to talk to Brian Hagen about just what it took to put all of that together. Jody? Hi, I'm Jody Letty, and today I'm here in Quartz of Four Seasons with Brian Hagen, who is a local computer animated lights lighting show enthusiast, and he has done a great display for Halloween, and he's going to tell us all about it. I had the opportunity to come here last night with my family and see it in the dark, which is obviously when you want to come see it, but uh, we're on this beautiful sunny day, and Brian's going to tell us all about what he did and how he got into it. So tell us all about it. Sure. This is, um, there's about 8,000 um, uh, RGB, which is light color changing lights. Um, they're all LED. Um, they operate off of 12 volts. They're very efficient. Everything is run off of almost two re lighting receptacles. Um, there's probably about 3,000 feet of uh, lighting extension cords and um, plugs and thousands of zip ties and um, tons of time on the ladder. Um, it takes a price a couple months to start setting everything up. Um, everything is then controlled from inside on the computer, uh, where I sequence everything to the to uh, match the music. Um, you can also listen to it on your um, uh, on your car audio. Uh, you can turn in your radio to 98.5 and hear the music as you're uh, watching the lights animated. Yeah, that's so cool. So RGB means red, green, blue, right? Correct. So the multicolored lights are red, green, blue. Red, green, and blue, and then you have you, some orange, right? Yep. You can okay. uh, mix any color in, in the rainbow in between oh, that. Okay. So uh, awesome. yeah, at your RGB is your primary color, so you can use that to mix and and make just about any color you can imagine. Lights don't always reproduce the best colors, but you can make pink, purple, blue, and awesome. uh, turquoise, all different kinds of colors. So how did you decide to do this, and is this your first year? This will be my second year. Uh, this is my first year going with the um, the RGB lights and the LED. I uh, started getting into it last year. Saw some of the clips on the internet with different houses and um, really liked what they did and thought, you know, I wanted to try that myself and uh, it just kind of went from there. And so have you had any help from other lighting enthusiasts? Uh, a lot of help. Uh, a lot of what we do is um, online um, there's really no one local that I know of yet that um, that is doing it so a couple of people in Virginia and other people um, a lot of online on on lighting forums and lighting news groups and things uh, everyone's helping share different songs and sequences and you know how they've done things a little easier and make the work a little bit easier to do yeah it's great so um, we were here last night and I think there were five or six songs I remember Thriller Gangnam Style, whoop, whoop. Yep. and uh, what were the other ones? One was from A Nightmare Before Christmas, yep. A Nightmare Before Christmas. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. Um, we've got uh, Black Eyed Peas, uh, Pump It, uh, we've got another Black Eyed Peas, the Boom Boom Pow, uh, two LMFAO songs, which uh, Party Rock and Sexy and I Know It, and those were the big ones last year right. that I saw on a lot of the YouTube clips, and I just thought I, I had to try and do that myself. And so. you alter, you do a two-day show, right? So if you come two days in a row, you get to see two yes, different shows. Yes, different, yeah, two different shows, two different songs, um, working on a couple little odds and ends and maybe throw in a couple special songs for Halloween if I get them done in time. Um, it's really popular to do some like the techno dubstep songs and and I really like that kind of music so hopefully I'll get that in time for for Halloween and That's have awesome. a little special special show in there. It's so great yeah. that you do this. I was I was telling your boys last night, coolest dad in the whole neighborhood. Definitely. And I could tell they think so too. So that's great. And um if you noticed, Brian's last name is Hagen, Christine Hagen. If you watch our show, Pet of the Week is one of your hosts of Pet of the Week. So this is uh, Christine's husband. And um, it also in court, Courts of the Four, courts of four Seasons, of four seasons um, yeah. there are some other really nice light displays. So if you decide to come on out, just two doors down um, this way from Brian's house, there's a really nice uh, light display as well. It's not animated and there's no music. Yeah. But he's got some really great decorations as well, and I think there are some others you said in this neighborhood. Yeah, and the one on the corner there, um, when uh, we've only been here for two years, but uh, he does an amazing Halloween and uh, Christmas display. And on Halloween night, he usually has a little uh, walk-through haunted house type Ooh. thing for the kids. And uh, um, so this is, it's a light-friendly neighborhood. So. Um, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a nice neighborhood to drive through and check right. things out. Yeah. So we're here in Courts of Four Seasons on Ice Crystal Court, and it's definitely worth the trip if you don't live in the Gambrels-Odenton area. Um, anywhere in Anne Arundel County, make the trip out. 
and see the Hagen's light show as well as the others in the neighborhood. And um, I don't think we mentioned this, but there are four, I don't know if you can get this, four different faces on the house that are the, the computer animation when the uh, music sounds, when the singers on the songs, the mouths of those faces actually go with like they're lip syncing the music. So it's really cool. If you haven't seen anything like this, it's definitely worth coming to see. And I thank you so much for being here today, Brian. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, just thanks for coming out. And just uh, if anyone comes out, just uh, enjoy the show and just make sure not to, to walk through the, through the grass. There's the cords everywhere and we don't want to <laughs> see anyone getting tripped and falling and all that good stuff. So. Right. And like Brian said, for the music, um, he even has a sign, a lighted up sign out here that has 600 and some lights that says tuned to 98.5. He even has it rigged so that you can sit in your car and listen to the music that's going with the animation from the warmth of your car. And uh, so this is, I love this. This is wonderful. I told him, I hope he keeps it up for Christmas and just switches the music and maybe puts some Santa Claus hats on the pumpkins. Sure. Yep. That'd yep, be great. That's, uh, <laughs> hopefully the plan. Maybe we'll have to convert them into uh, Santa Claus phases right. or something like that. So. And convince Christine to let you keep it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it won't be as much work, so it'll, all, it'll already be set up this time. So uh, it's just a matter of changing the songs and everything. Okay, yeah, so. great. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Brian. It's, it's great for the community yep. and uh, great for getting people out on these beautiful days. And uh, enjoy the season. Yep. What are your kids going to be for Halloween? Uh, let's see. Addison is going to be uh, Jack Sparrow from Ooh. Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, I think Ethan, uh, last time we checked, I think he is a dinosaur, but it changes uh, every other day. Okay. So we'll see when Halloween comes out uh, okay. what he's going to come out as. So we're not sure yet. Okay. Well, great. And one of you, you said you'll both go out, right? And you'll have someone here manning yeah, we'll the... Someone here, and then we'll probably just alternate between... Um, between uh, Chrissy and I, maybe just, I know a lot of people are gonna have the questions and things like that, right. so try and be here when I can to, to answer questions for people and okay. all that, yep. Awesome, well thanks so much, Brian, and enjoy yep. the holidays, yep. and hopefully we'll be back during the Christmas season, sure. do another good. show, yep. okay. Okay, thanks. For Community Spotlight and Arundel County Week in Review, I'm Jody Letty. Thanks, Jody. Eric, this thing took more than a month to install and program. Now that's dedication. So it'll probably take you like a year to put it <laughs> Probably. He You're must right. have some very awesome neighbors. That's all mm -hmm. I got to say. We got a list of the other songs. Monster Mash, of course, you always have to the include Monster that. Monster Mash. It, it was, was a graveyard, graveyard smash. smash. Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? I love that song. It's my favorite song, even when it's not Halloween. It's your favorite song? It really is. Really? So Christmas music, people have like, deck the halls with bell. You Monster Mash. Mash. It was it's a great old smash. Yes, I love that song. Oh, <laughs> Black Eyed Peas, Boom Boom Pow. Of course, our favorite, Gangnam, Gangnam Style. Style. Dance Michael cheesy. Jackson's Look classy. Thriller. Ghostbusters, The Nightmare Before Christmas, and many, many more. Many, many more. <laughs> well, that's way too much for me, folks. Yeah, you can't I dance. set up the fire pit in the driveway. <laughs> I can't dance. <laughs> I can dance. You look fancy. I dance Don't cheesy. Dance. <laughs> dance Dress classy, dance that's, cheesy. Yeah, that's, that's the you. motto. That's you. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I tell you, you know, everybody does their own little thing for Halloween. Yeah. It's great that they do that. I think that's really getting in the spirit. Kids love it. Adults love it even more. But what do you uh, do? Well, we do we do a fire pit at the end of the driveway, oh, hand nice. out candy. Make and, s'mores? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's and just awesome. enjoy the neighbors, enjoy seeing all the kids in their costumes. Okay. And uh, enjoy our kids going around and getting candy for us. I mean, for them. <laughs> I like um, to sit in a chair and pretend like I'm just a scarecrow or something that doesn't move. And when they get to the very last step, freak them out. So you can actually sit still for more than five Shut seconds? Shut your mouth! Really? Yes. You can actually sit there and not say a word for 10 seconds? Yes. That's amazing. We're not gonna try it right Let's now. Let's do it, can we do it? <laughs> but you know what, Kristen? We've always wanted to learn something from each show. Right. So, what's my favorite thing to do on the yeah. shows? Great, We're stupid. gonna have I mean, a quiz! Quizzes. This Ooh. week we have the Halloween <laughs> quiz, folks, so you can play along. If you're ready, here we go. We have a cool title for this? I'm sure he'll come up with some crazy music that he can <laughs> put in there. This first one really surprised me. I gotta All tell right. you, I always thought that Halloween was invented in Mexico, the Day okay. of the Dead, where they celebrate uh, every year. But that's not so. Where do you think Halloween was invented? Well, not that? your boyfriend Josh's house. 
ex where was ex boyfriend Josh's house? Yes, from South River many many years ago. Not his house. Oh my goodness! I don't know. I, you would think some kind of Slovakian country, kind of like Transylvania, Ooh, where that supposedly came Dracula. From. Yes. Pretty good. Pretty yes, good. I would say something like that. It was actually Ireland. Are you so kidding? The Irish. Yes, they were in the pub. They were drinking beer, Figures. and they said, "Let's have a." Home Bunch for the leprechaun of drunks. You know, I would accept a Great Britain or <laughs> even Northern France, um, but the Celts, the Celts, the Celtics actually invented it 2,000 years ago. Okay. But they invented the celebration because the cold winters were so often associated with the dead, mm -hmm. and now we have heaters. Thank system, goodness. So we're good there. All right, all right. Enough about question one. Question number two. Okay. What percentage of all candy sold in this country is sold on Halloween? And how much candy do you think we're talking about here? That's oh, I'm going to say you're in direct competition with Easter. Easter, that's There's right. A lot of you got Easter. Easter, Easter candy, yes, very good. Um, I'm going to say maybe a fifth. A fifth of a fifth? all candy. A fifth of sold? all candy. So you think the uh, the Hershey's plant up there in Pennsylvania is cranking out so much yeah. candy right now because yeah, absolutely. Kind of like the elves do before Willy Christmas Wonka? with the toys. Oompa Loompas. That's not real. Yes, it. Oh, what? It's not real. All right, all right. Here's the answer. What? Well, this year. Americans will buy about $2.3 billion worth of candy. You're kidding. And about a, a quarter of that candy, not a fifth, but you were close. A okay. quarter of that candy will be bought during Halloween. Wow. And the average jack-o'-lantern bucket, and I know this for a fact, plastic ones. holds about 250 pieces of candy. And that amounts to, get this, are you ready? Ready. You ready to go back to the gym okay. on November 1st? 9,000 calories. Oh so if gosh. you eat that whole bucket of candy, 9,000 calories That's coming ridiculous. your way. That's about three pounds of sugar, according to the California Milk Processors Board. Oh my goodness. All right, one more. We're okay. going to do one more question. All we right. got time for that. Mm -hmm. Where does the holiday get its name from? I know this one. You do? Mm -hmm. Kristen's going to get an answer right, folks. Mm -hmm. All Hallows Eve. I knew All that Hallows one. Eve. Yep, of yep. course it comes from All Hallows mm -hmm. Eve, yep. which might ring a bell, but All Halloween, All Hallows is another name for All Saints Day. Hallows right. actually means holy. It does? It was the day. Yes, it does. All right. They would pray for the souls of the dead. I'm going to pray for you. I'm not dead. Okay. Yet. And turned <laughs> into the night. You've got your pitchfork over there, and I've been poked a couple times. And turned into the night before. Being for the evil spirits. So oh, that's kind of creepy. That's very creepy. So these are obviously spirits that have unfinished They have business. not passed over. They have not, not passed, passed over, over to the other side. They're still waiting to haunt you. They're, no, they night. don't haunt me. No, they don't get me. behind the eyes of creepy baby dolls. and the They don't haunt me. Shh, that's coming up later. Ugh. That's coming up later. You're going to learn all about <laughs> that. You're going to learn how creepy this is. No, we're not talking is. about dolls. Uh-uh. Oh, well, yeah, we are. Oh, I'm yeah, not, Chucky. No, I don't think so. Yeah, you'll be here. <laughs> Now, what is Halloween without kids in costumes? What are your kids going as this year? They are going as a football player. Brandon's oh, going to be a football nice. player. And Raven? Rachel's, yes. And awesome. Rachel's going to be a uh, cat. She's a cat? She's a nice cat. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, Carolyn Ryan is out at Papa John's farm and filed this report. Carolyn. There's a slight chill in the air. The leaves have changed colors, and there are pumpkins everywhere you look. That must mean it's time for Halloween. We had an opportunity to ask some folks to share their favorite things about Halloween. Let's hear what they had to say. So what is your favorite thing about Halloween? Trick or treating. And what are you going to be for Halloween this year? Pay God. Very good. Thank you. Do you have a favorite tradition for Halloween? Yes, we like to go out and uh, the pumpkin patch, get pumpkins and go to the mazes and things and then wait for the kids to come to the door, see them all in their costumes. Very good. Thank you. What is your favorite thing about Halloween? Well, I think just watching the enjoyment in my son's eyes as uh, it's time to go out to a pumpkin patch and look for that very special pumpkin and obviously all of the activities that all these pumpkin patches offer. A lot of times um, a hayride obviously is a big favorite and um, uh, just the beautiful fall colors with the mums and all of that. But trick-or-treating with my son and just enjoying um, all the festivities that our neighborhood provides for the kids is just fabulous. Thank you. You're welcome. What are you going to be for Halloween this year? A, a Power Ranger. Oh, very cool. What's your favorite thing about Halloween? Uh, dressing up. Very good. Thank you. So what's your favorite thing about Halloween? Um, being outside and having lots of family time. We tend to do lots of fun family things at Halloween. Parties, we dress up as a family, 
We do bonfires, right? We make lots of s'mores and we eat lots of candy corn. <laughs> well, it sounds like there are folks that have a lot of fun around Halloween. What's your favorite thing about Halloween? Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Carolyn. Power Rangers. I remember Power Rangers. You do? And Transformers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh. Decepticons? Optimus and Prime. Optimus Prime. I always said I was going to name my first kid Optimus Prime. I'm an awesome mom. <laughs> what, did yeah. what did Josh think of that? Uh, is that why? I love talking to Josh about this. Stop it. <laughs> it's kind of a throwback, though, these days. Um, it's getting late, so be sure to get out and pick up your pumpkin, get that pumpkin. so you can start carving. Kristen Lagana, save one for her, and please. And make sure you buy local. Buy local. We have nice yeah. pumpkins around here. Well, thanks everyone for sharing your thoughts on Creep Night. And as we promised Eric, we've already been to Deal and Gambles and the outskirts of Glen Burnie. We have much more, but I'm not scared. Yet. Mm. Nobody can get us here, right? Uh, We're safe here, yeah, right? Yeah, those rafters, what are you those talking things about? with eyes, they're bats. They're going to come down what are you later. Talking about? Oh, yeah. Nothing to worry about, Chris. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. Not <laughs> Where'd she go? Oh, my gosh. She had to take a bathroom break again, I guess. Well, folks, there's more Week in Review to come. I have to figure out what happened to Kristen. Check out our community calendar for Halloween events, folks. We're going to be right back with some really, really scary ghost stories. Stay with us. I got no pulse, we're losing him. I'm shocking because it rode all the time. We just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We were just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right, this isn't happening. He'll be fine. Eh, yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Clear. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Shock him. And welcome back, folks. Well, anyone can tell a ghost story, and not quite like Kristen can tell oh, a ghost story. She is a phenomenal <laughs> storyteller, folks. But you know what? Those ghost stories, they're not always true. So we brought a man on the show today who tells the truth. That's right. He tells the truth. Skip Booth from the Anne Arundel Historical Society is joining us today. Wow, he's here. Skip Booth has <laughs> magically appeared. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I tell you, that is absolutely. Talk about Halloween, and we're dressed up like, you know, like we normally are, of right. course, to, to tape the show. But Skip, welcome to the show. Welcome to Week in Review. It's Halloween, so what better to talk about than real-life ghost stories? And I understand you've met a couple of ghosts. A, a few in, in passing. Um, I'm basically a cynic uh, when it comes to the supernatural, but... Um, I've seen some things over the years that have um, caused me to have second thoughts. The Anne Arundel County Historical Society has um, a historical museum on the edge of um, BWI Airport called the Benson Hammond House. And uh, it is haunted. Uh huh. And you, you said it right there, and I think that's important for everybody to know. Skip is a historian. Skip looks at the history of things mm -hmm. and not so much the paranormal activity, but I understand the Benson Hammond House has had a little paranormal activity. Yes, it has. About a year ago, a um, group of investigators of the paranormal approached us and asked if they could do an investigation one evening. And uh, we chose a, a evening this past February Friday evening for them to come in, set up their equipment, and see what they could find. And it was a very interesting evening in February. You don't usually expect to see lightning and thunder on a Friday night in February in this area. Absolutely. Well, we had a torrential downpour and lightning and thunder, and they had their equipment set up, and it was a very interesting evening. They were there to about 1 o'clock in the morning. And a couple weeks later, they came back and presented us with a 
report other findings, including some recordings. And the, the most telling one was on the third floor, one of the investigators is fiddling around with his equipment, getting things ready, and he's, he just said, you have a nice house here. And on this recording, you hear this tiny, frail, small voice say, thank you. Oh, you're yes. kidding. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> no, no. But the, the, the um, supernatural occurrences in the Benson Hammond house actually go back a long, mm -hmm. long time ago. In the 40s, um, a, a, a man was telling me on a tour that he uh, had picked up his girlfriend at the house. His fa the family lived there. And as they were departing, they turned around in the car and looked back at the house. And there was no one in the house at the time. But in the, third, the second floor window, right above the front door, they saw a figure staring at them as they drove mm -hmm. away. And they, they stopped and went back in. And there was absolutely no one there. Wow. It, the, the house is vacant. Yeah. So... If you take that and then jump forward to the 70s when the Historical Society took over the house, it was pretty much in disrepair. It was pretty yeah. much fallen uh, by the wayside, and the Historical Society restored it. And they had a, a group of erstwhile volunteers, that we, the docents, who give tours of the house. And every single docent will say that at one point in time, when they were working in the house, they heard a music box playing. Ooh, that's the creepiest. And no, I, you love music. How it doesn't matter. That little, music box playing. little tinkling of a music box that's creepy stuff, almost as creepy as you. Well, we had an archaeologist working there. And um, she'd love to come in and do her reports in the modern kitchen that's on the back of the house. And she could be by herself in the house, no one else on the property. And one day she was in there working on a report and she felt just like felt a, like someone was looking over her shoulder, you know, a presence. Like a devil? Could have been. Yeah. I don't think it was a clown in a witch hat, <laughs> <laughs> but it could have been a devil. But whatever it was, something touched the back of her neck. <laughs> and she was out of the, she was out of the house. Different. She left the front door open. She flew out of the house got in her car, drove all the way over to Beth Nall's house, who was the director at the time, and would never, ever, ever come back into the house wow. by herself. Oh my mm. Absolutely uh, petrified of that. And Beth Nall, who was a director at the time in the 90s, she recalls one night going over there during a storm, a th snowstorm, to clean the ice off the heat, um, the, the, the heat. Um, HVAC. So yeah. Sure. Um, and they went into the house. The only path to the house was the wheels from their four by four. So inside the house, she um, and her husband hear kids playing outside. Wow. And they go to the door and look outside, and there's no children to be mm. seen. None at all. There are none anywhere. So she... They went back inside, and as soon as they went back inside, they heard the kids again. And this happened about three or four times, and they never could see any children outside. Now, the house was built in the 1820, late 1820s, replacing a log cabin by Thomas Benson. And his son, Joseph Benson, who lived there, had, had uh, 14 children. Wow. 12 of which survived infancy. So my guess is, is that there... It was a tough time, and they probably didn't have a lot of, a lot of fun growing up. And it's my, my feeling that that's what's going on there, mm. that the kids are uh, they're having a good time. And that's why we have a doll collection there. Tell us about these dolls. I understand there's some, well, some I don't want to hear about dolls. Some interesting. Oh, close your ears. We, I think that everybody out there wants to hear about these dolls. Well, well, we have dolls, and some of them are in the children's uh, bedroom on the second floor. And as you walk through, if you look at them, You're on the second floor, right? their, their eyes are following you. No. Yeah. No, I'm not going in there. <laughs> no. And then you go upstairs to the doll room and you walk across the floor and the dolls are kind of like going no like way. this. 
back and forth. Now you know it, it's, it's your foot, footfalls on the f floor up there, but it doesn't matter. Those, those dolls are watching you. Yes, they are, Kristen. Stop it! And uh, so they're, they're not watching just anyone. They're watching you <laughs> on Week in Review. Stop. On TV. They, they, yeah, we, we look, have a cable the over there. We have cable over That's there right. at the house, and they, they're there every <laughs> night. They, mm -hmm. they, they come downstairs to, to the parlor and, and watch uh, Week in Review. They're your biggest fans. Yeah, exactly. Come over and say hi to them. Yeah. They, they no, love. No, no. Okay. Better yet, Skip, we're going to do this. No, we are no. going to broadcast no, live not. from the Benson Hammond House. Eric's going to broadcast midnight. live. <laughs> because it'll be there no, with us. I tell you, Skip, I'm, I'm just amazed. You know, you think of all these places, New Orleans, you know, Gettysburg, where you hear about all these ghost tours and all these hauntings. But right here in Anne Arundel County, it's just amazing to hear well, some of the stories. Well, Annapolis has got to be one of the most haunted cities in the country. Yeah, you were talking well, about this house. Do you consider that the most haunted property in Anne Arundel County? Or? Well, I... I I would say, just from my personal uh, relationship with the house, is that uh, uh, the, ben uh, the, the uh, ghosts at the Benson Hammond House have a special place in my heart. Yeah, uh, they sound like they're good ghosts. For the most part. Uh, <laughs> we, we have heard um, on the um, recordings that we got back from the ghost hunters, there was a, 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 um, one ghost that was a little ticked off, and I Ooh. don't think he liked being there. Mm, now, you on Week in Review. Uh, huh? he, was, he was pretty oh. gruff, and he used some foul language. Oh, oh you're kidding. No, 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 no. Um, that, was, um, that was very interesting to hear. It's a phenomenon that they, apparently they record uh, random, like, radio transmission yeah. type stuff that uh, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, there are voices that you can make out on these recordings, and they're not a happy voice. But An Annapolis, on the other hand, I mean, what, what, we have two competing ghost tours yeah. in Annapolis now. I haven't and, been on one yet, but I'd like uh, to go. You know, Reynolds Tavern is, is said to be haunted. Yes, Reynolds Tavern, I have heard That's, that. That was the public library there. Wow. I wonder if it's someone trying to return over new books. Say, I would you maybe, never and, know. And then, uh, the, the no most problem. haunted house in Annapolis is the Bryce House. Oh, the Bryce House, okay. Now, I could not find any collaborating documentation, but um, uh, an author named Stevens, uh, who wrote a history of Annapolis back in the uh, 30s, he reported it, and it was echoed in some... Uh, Elmer Jackson, who was the editor of the uh, Capitol, that... Um, there was a skeleton found in the walls of the Bryce Ooh. House, Ooh. a woman's skeleleton by Edgar some work Allen by some right workmen. There. Oh yeah, about five foot five. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not me. I'm five seven. Oh, you grew overnight. You got the heels on. <laughs> so but archaeological excavations at the house, explorations. So the Bryce House is now a um, privately owned by a um, a, a, a international brick. Uh, layers union mm. or something like that. I forget the, exactly who owns it, but they did do some excavations there and they noticed some very interesting geometric um, layouts in some of the rooms. And they actually found some hoodoo, African American hoodoo evidence in the house, mm. like cowrie shell type yeah. things and pieces of quartz. And it was all significantly located. In, in, the, in the house, you could predict where it was going to be found. Yeah. Well, Skip, I gotta tell you, it's amazing to hear just about the, uh, the historical stories, but the paranormal activity that has happened right here in Anne Arundel County. Just amazing. Just I might not go to sleep tonight. Makes you scared. Kristen's going to have nightmares forever, folks. Yeah, you like that. And I got to say, before before we let you go, um, the Anne Arundel Historical Society, you folks do a wonderful job in really keeping up on what has happened here in Anne Arundel County and making sure that we're preserving history. You can visit the Anne Arundel Historical Society on the web. Just Google them or go to the website below. Skip, thanks for joining us and have a happy Halloween, my friend. Happy Halloween. Will do. Thank you much. Oh my gosh, I tell you, people just come and go. Here. I want to learn that trick. I, you scare them away. Oh, please. They say, oh my gosh, I got to get out of here. It's Kristen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, folks, these, this next segment are not people in costumes like us. They're actually <laughs> public safety professionals. 
And folks, they have some tips to stay safe and still have fun on Halloween night. First up is Sergeant Tracy Morgan of the Anne Arundel County Police. We'll send it to Sergeant Morgan. Thanks, Eric. Halloween will be upon us next week, and I would like to provide everyone with some safety tips and reminders for safe trick-or-treating. Remember that children should wear something reflective on their costumes and carry a flashlight. If your child is wearing a mask, please make sure that they can see and breathe easily. Only trick-or-treat at homes that are well lit. Never go to a home that is dark or has a no candy sign posted on the door. The younger kids should be accompanied by a trusted adult. This adult is encouraged to walk door to door at each home with your child when they visit. Remind children to never enter a home or approach a vehicle as they are trick or treating. For the older kids, it's best for them to remain in well lit areas and to never take shortcuts through yards or isolated areas. Teach everyone in your family that if anyone tries to grab them or make unwanted contact with them, to make every effort to yell as loud as possible and to draw attention to themselves, and also to run away and escape the situation. Then notify a trusted adult or call 911 immediately. Back to you in the studio, but have a fun and safe Halloween. Well, thanks, Sarge. I guess it's better safe than sorry. You know, but there's more, right, Kristen? Oh, yeah, that's correct, Eric. Let's go to Division Chief Michael Cox of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. Chief! Thanks, Kristen. Halloween is considered to be a fun holiday with its roots in ancient religions and folklore. While some countries observe this time as a remembrance of departed loved ones and religious saints, it has evolved into a celebration here in the United States. Children and adults alike enjoy this holiday and celebrate it by dressing in costumes, attending parties, and going door to door collecting candy and other treats. Although Halloween is a time of celebration, it is important that everyone keep safety in mind while moving about our communities. Halloween can be a joyous and memorable time by just applying some simple safety tips. The Anne Arundel County Fire Department suggests the following tips. Children should always be accompanied by adults when going door to door trick or treating. Trick or treating visits should be restricted to homes of family, friends, and close neighbors. When possible, trick or treat in large groups. Try to attend community or family Halloween parties in lieu of trick or treating. Be cognizant of motor vehicle traffic within the community. And costumes should always be flame retardant and not use accessories that cause trip or fall hazards, such as oversized shoes, long pants, or skirts. Mask can obstruct a child's vision, so we recommend non-toxic hypoallergenic makeup rather than using a mask. Small children should not carve pumpkins, but rather draw faces on the pumpkin with markers. Pumpkins should be lit with battery-operated lanterns, as open flames from candles increase the risk of fires and accidental burns. Children should also be discouraged from snacking on candy while trick-or-treating. Parents should check the treats at home for signs of tampering and also watch for small or loose packages. Parents should dispose of any candy that is found to be open or that may present a choking hazard, such as gum, peanuts, hard candies, or small toys. Survey the outside of your home for trip hazards, such as garden hoses, bikes, toys, or lawn ornaments. And replace burned out light bulbs and ensure sidewalks are clear of the breeze. Kristen? Thanks, Chief. County fire officials also to want to remind you to test your smoke detectors monthly. <laughs> you know what? This was a fun show. This was a good time. I know, this it's is about, fun. I tell you the ghost stories. That's amazing. That's amazing stuff. I mean, yeah. it's like when the hat flies off your head. Oh, I mean, what happened with that? Seriously, I could talk to Skip for hours. He's very interesting. He is interesting. But what do you figure. think about that? Doing a show from the Hammond House. I think you're crazy. I don't think that's going to okay. happen. You could go in costume. No, you are there. that's all right. Is this where you're? Is this how you're going to go on Halloween? Is this where you're going to go trick or treating? Are you going to knock on people's doors dressed as? No, 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 no. Dressed as Elvira? No. I mean, oh, close, <laughs> close. Um, we're actually playing a Halloween party at the Whiskey in Annapolis on Are Saturday you night. Are putting a plug for your band on this no, show? No, maybe. A shameless self-promotion, Kristen Ligana? Yeah, but I already have a Halloween yeah. costume is my point because we're dressing up. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You, what as you ask? What is the band going as? I didn't ask that, but I bet you're going to tell us. Yep, we're going as the Adams Family. Ooh. And I'm Morticia. I would not have guessed you yep. were Morticia. That's pretty nice. Now, what are you dressing as? I'm dressing as a professional newscaster. Oh, wow. What do you think about that? That's a change from your norm. That is a change from yeah. my norm. I When's your know. costume going to go on? 
Don't you like my tie? It's yeah, really... it's beautiful. Look, I got two ties on. Keep that Doesn't clown that stuff well? away from me. Kristen is a fan of clowns, folks. No, so if I'm you not. Do, <laughs> if, you, if you have clown collections and you have old things that you just want to get rid of, you can send it to no. Kristen Lagana at kristenlagana.com. No. <laughs> Kristen I just made Kristen up Lagana. your website. What's your favorite candy? My favorite candy? What do you like that your kids bring home oh in the Halloween God. bag? I would never eat my kids' candy. Oh, my father did it all the time. He's no, like, oh, I'm going to test it. Parents don't do that. Parents Came don't from do that. strangers. Got to make sure that. it's safe. Uh, anything with chocolate and peanut butter is my favorite. Oh. I also like, you know, the sweet tarts and uh, the sprees. If any, you know, if any of the parents are handing out sprees, tell me where your house yeah. is because my <laughs> kids are coming to see you. Did you ever try I shock like tarts? Shock tarts are good. Shock tarts are good. Tarts so are you good. like Reese's peanut butter cups? I love Reese's peanut butter yeah, cups. Those are Bring good. them on. I'll those eat the good. whole. I'll eat the whole thing. Yeah. Well, it's all about the trade. I mean, this the is trade. a coveted tradition for years and years that you know my sister and I took part in when we were children. That you sit down with your sibling. Are you telling a ghost story? You empty doing out your bag, <clears throat> and then you barter. And a head comes out. No. Of it. And it looks at you and no. it says, Kristen Lagana, you're going to go on to do great things in life. You're going to be a devil in a band that looks <laughs> like Elvira. Shut your mouth. All right, folks. Well, go out there. Have a happy Halloween. We will continue to deliver the uh, all the news you can take here at Week in Review. Well, folks, that wraps hey, up this week. I'm not finished. So anyway, Vicky would always give me her Snickers, and I would always take the Milky Ways. Didn't you have that kind of thing going up in your house? No, I was you the didn't? older brother. I took all the good oh, candy. Oh, please. He got all the leftovers. That doesn't leftovers. happen. No. It happens. No. It happens. Happy Halloween, Vicky. And I normally don't get poked Still take with all your Snickers. devil's fork. I give you my Milky Ways. Give you the Milky Ways. There you go. Well, that will wrap up <laughs> this week's edition of Week in Review, folks. But wait, I feel kind of tingly. Huh? Oh. <laughs> you can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archive episodes are available at blip.tv and on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the free, yes, free Dave Abrams video podcast <laughs> at iTunes or like us Go on Facebook at Arundel TV. <laughs> Please tune in again next week for more news, highlights, and Kristen Lagana costumes from around your county. We'll see you next time. Happy Halloween! Ooh, where did he come from? Gee there, that's a good look for you. Wonder if you'll take some direction now. Sit, Eric. Good job. <laughs>